we are going to build currency convector application using React and Node.js. And this is used to convert between two currencies, for example, from USD to Ghana CDs. And if I want to convert one USD, let's see the rate. And by the time of recording this video, this is the rate and this is the convected amount which means that 1 USD is equivalent to 13 Ghana CDs and if I want to convert to this currency, this is a rate which means that 1 USD is equivalent to this one and then this is the convected amount. And we can extend this project to include more currencies and I will show you as you go through this project. And for this project, we are going to use an API from Exchange Rate API. And if you click on the documentation, let's see how you're going to use this. Under the API endpoint, we have this endpoint. Per conversion, enriched data, historical, supported, and others. We are going to use the per conversion, so click on that. All what we need is our API key and the two currencies that we want to make the conversion. And then this is the endpoint that we are going to hit. And to know more about the currencies that this API supports, click on the codes we support. And here we have the unsupported currencies, which are these ones. If you scroll down here, these are the supported currencies. So we can include these ones in our application. But for me, I have simplified it to use these ones. Alright, so next step is that make sure to have an API key which is free of charge. Now if you go to home page, here all what you need is to provide your email address and they will send you your API keys. Assuming that you have your API keys, then let's get into it. And for front end, we are going to use Vite to generate our React application. So let's begin with the back end. Let's get back to VS Code and in case you want to have the exact theme as I'm using, let me show you the extension that I'm using. The extension is called, let me type it here as Tenacious, which is this one and I have some cool extensions that you may have interest with, for example, better comment. This is going to help us to style our comments by giving different colors and code spell checker to avoid spelling mistakes as you move on. And then year seven, the icons is Helium icon. And you need to have an extension called Tender Client, which is this one. And this is going to help us to test our API. Before we get into it, let me give you the flow for this project. At this point, you may be asking that, well, we can directly call the API from our React application. And the answer is, yes, of course, you can do that. But why do we need backend like Node.js? And the answer is that, let's say you want to improve this application by implementing some logics like logging in or authentication and that is unless a user is logged in before accessing this application, then you need to have your own backend. And also, let's say you want to implement subscription or payment before using this application, we need or you need your own backend. And having your own backend, it will help you to avoid what is called cost error. Not all APIs are cost free and I'll show you as we move on in this project. And also, it will help you to understand how you can utilize Node.js to build application using third party APIs. So let's get into it. So over here, I have already created a folder called currency convector. I'm going to have one folder called backend. And let's begin with this one before getting into React. So I'm going to have one file called app.js and let's initialize our project as npm by using npm init dash dash yes 
this one gives us the default configuration and we have our package.json file let's rename the main as app because that is what we specified here as app and let's install the packages we need for this project we will need express for our server and then axios as our http client and cost to prevent cost error and we're gonna use express rate limit i'll explain to you when we get into the implementation and then dot env to be able to access our environment variables all right let's continue with the server let's import or require express as express and then let's have the port as process.env.port in case you don't have one I'm gonna use 5000 and then instance of app as app is equal to express as a function call and then down here I'm gonna use start the server I'm having this color for my comment because of the extension called beta comment and I see some underline here meaning that I made some typing mistake and this is possible because of the extension called code spell checker all right so down here I'm gonna start the server as app dot listen and then pass in the port and then callback function and I'm gonna have the middle words up here and the first middle word is to use app dot use and then pass in express.json and this middleware will pass the incoming JSON data from the user and then let's require the express rate limit all right the purpose for this one is that it will help us to avoid unnecessary requests from the same user within some short possible time because for the API sometimes it has some quota and that is number of requests that you can make and a user can make unlimited requests within some minutes so this middleware is going to help us to avoid that all what we need is to plug in as app.use and then pass in the let me create instance of the rate here as which is equal to the rate limit function call and then the object and the first property is called window ms we are going to limit this one for 15 minutes and the value here is going to be 15 multiplied by 60 and then multiply by 1000 after that we're gonna have the maximum or max this means that we are going to limit each ip to 100 requests per window so here as that and then we're gonna plug in here as api limiter all right we are done with that let me change this one to uppercase this is just a naming convention and let's go ahead and create our route i would say conversion router we are going to write everything on one file as app.post and then the path here i'm going to specify as api for slash convect you can name it whatever you want and then async then the callback function as that and let's bring in try and catch let's make sure that what the user is passing is being accessible in our route here so i would say and it can be found on the request body i will say data is equal to rec dot body and let me log the body here or just the data here and let's start our server and to start it we're gonna use a new feature in node.js as node dash dash watch and then the name of our file in this case it is called app.js and with this one we don't need node mon again to automatically restart our server now let's hit enter i have an error 
The issue here is that we have messed up with the folder structure. We have to place all these ones inside the backend folder. We made some mistake when we were initializing the project. So let me place everything inside that. If I collapse, there we go. I have it as that. Therefore, we have to cd in into the backend folder as cd backend. And now we can initiate the snippet as node dash dash watch the name of the file as app and the server is running on this port. If I make changes to the server file or my code and save, the server has been restarted. So we are good to go. Last step is we are going to integrate this API into our application. So here we will need this one. I have copied that. And now back to the project. I'm going to have a variable here as const API URL. All right, we will find a way to restructure this one. And we will need our API key as const API dash key is equal to, we are going to save it inside our environment variable and we can access that on process.env and I'm going to make it as exchange rate API. Therefore, we have to create the .env file inside the backend and then paste that. And this is my API key. Make sure to use your own API key. Therefore, we will need the .env package as .env. And this package will help us to automatically access the data inside the .env file. So let's get back to the app and I can remove this one. All right, we are done with that. So let's modify the endpoint well. All what we need is up to this site. We are going to remove this one and then these ones are going to be dynamic. So remove everything from here as that. Remember, this one requires, let me bring it back. It requires from and then to and then the amount that we want to convert. So remove this one again. And now back here, we are going to destructure the properties as from, from which currency and then to which currency and then the amount that we want to convert. We will need Axios. So let's require Axios here. So now let's make sure that we have access to this one. So let me log as an object. And now how can we access this data? We're going to use an extension called tender client. So if you don't have it here, right click and then select tender client, which is this. And then let's make new request. The endpoint here is going to be HTTPS, supposed to be HTTP, colon the port, which is 5000. And the endpoint is API forward slash convect. And it is post method. Let me hit send. Our server is hanging. If I check the terminal, we have them as undefined. So let's pass in the data. So under the body here, provide object and specify the properties as key value per and they must be in double quote. I will say from which currency I'm going to use USD, comma, and then to which currency I'm going to use GS. That is Ghana cities and then the amount I'm going to specify one Ghana cities and if I hit send, let's check the terminal. I think unless I cancel the ongoing one, cancel and let me try again and we have the result down here. So we are going to pass this one to the API to make the request and that is it. 
So let's get back to the implementation. So here, let me bring inside the try block here. And now let's construct the API. And it's going to be as const URL is equal to backtick dollar sign carry braces the API URL, which is this one. Remember, we have to make it in such a way that it matches this one. So it's going to be as that and then forward slash the API key and then forward slash the currency and that is from and then forward slash the to currency and then forward slash the amount. If you check the original API as you can see, it's supposed to be this one instead, our API key, and then from, and then the amount. We need to bring per here after the API key as per, and then forward slash the from, and then to, and then the amount. If you lock the URL, let's see, let me get back to the tender client, and then let me check the terminal. As you can see, this is a URL that matches the expected one. All right. So let's make the request. Let me cancel the ongoing response or request. And let's get into the app here. We are going to make the request. So here I'm going to make a request to the exchange rate API as const response is equal to await axios dot get method because that is what the API support and that is the get method. But in our backend, we are going to make post request. We're going to pass in the URL here. And then we're going to send the response back to the user. If you are using Axios, we're going to have the response on the response.data. In case we have one, then we're going to get the result and check for success. Well, let me show you what I mean here. Let me remove that and let's lock the response. Let's try again. If I send, let's check. As you can see, we have the response from the API and this is the conversion rate. We're going to check for success. In case we have that one, we know that our request was successful. So let's continue. Back to the route here. Remove this. I'm going to make a condition as if we have response dot data. In case we have one, then we're going to check for the success. That is response dot data dot result. In case it is equal to success, then we know that we have the response. Therefore, we're going to send the JSON data back to the user as base is equal to from and then the target to, remember we have from and to here from the user. And then let's have the conversion rate. And it can be found on the response dot data dot conversion underscore rate. If you check in the terminal, we're going to see the conversion rate. And then let's also have the converted amount and it can be found on the conversion result. And let's send supposed to be convected uppercase amount here. Yeah, and that is it. You can send other properties the way you want it. So else here, in case we have an error, then we're gonna send res.json and then pass in object and then message. And let's pass in more details about the error. 
as response dot data and then in the catch block here in case something goes wrong from our own server then we're gonna throw or send this error it's going to be the same thing here so let me copy this one and then send it here but the message can be found on error dot message all right we are done with the api let's try out if i hit send and this is the response from the api if i want to convert from let's check the supported currencies click on this and let's say i want to convert let me use any of these for example canadian and then to let's say china currency and send as you can see the rate so we are done with the api what has left is to connect the front end into it so let's get into the front end and let me create the folder as front end and let me close all these instances and we're going to use vite to generate our react application so click on get started and this is the snippet copy that make sure to open this one in the terminal and then paste that and it goes like npm create vite at latest and hit enter and then enter it is asking for the project name since we have already named it as front end we are going to use period here and enter and select react javascript and let's use npmi to install all the packages all right it has finished so let's install axios all right so let's start the server as npm run dev and copy this and open it inside our browser and this is our react application for this one i'm going to give you the template for the component and i'll show you the actual logic how we're gonna do it so i'm going to place the template copy that and then in the slc paste that this is the template and i'll give you the css also copy and paste it this is the css and then this is the template all right so let me show you how it's going to work i'm going to remove the original one remove that and then rename the template one to app i have made a copy and then this is the app.js or gsx and let's see it in the browser and this is what we have and the css has been messed up it means that it is conflicting with the default one that came with vit so remove the index.css or even the code from here and then the app.css remove the css also from here and this is what we have all right so let me show you how i handle the form over here or you can use third party library like forming for the form handling all right so here i have the local state and that is from to and then the amount the same way we did from the backend when making the request from the tender client let me show you here tender client here we passed in the data as from to and then the amount we are doing the same thing in the front end as from to and then the amount and these are the local state for managing the results and then the error let's bring in the use state here i think i have it here already and then these are the currencies that we are going to support if you want to add more you can do it by coming here and then provide these ones as that the choice is up to you and this is the handle change for the form we are using dynamic property as name by spreading all the previous data and then we're going to update the name 
and this is the submit handler and if you look inside the form we have the select from value and the class name and then from the from currency code we are looping through the currencies and then display the code accordingly and then the to currency it follows the same format and then the amount field and this is where we are placing the result in case we have the result from the state then we're going to take that and then use the converted amount and then the conversion rate if you look inside the backend this is a result and this is what we are placing them in the front end as conversion rate and then the converted amount all right so what has left is that we're going to make the actual request so here and that is inside the submit handler this is where we're going to talk to our api and then this is where we're going to talk to our api and our server or backend is going to talk to the exchange rate api for the main logic so i will say http request so in here let's bring in try and catch and for the try it's going to be as const and then the response is equal to await axios dot post the react application is going to talk to our server in this case this one so copy the endpoint back to the front end and then paste that and remember for the post method for axios we have to pass in the payload and the payload represent what the user is passing to the server for example from to and then the amount so here i'm going to pass in the form data from our state as form data so here as that all right and then here let's log the response from the api so let's get back to application this one let me close this one this is what we are done with it this is the original one and this is what we are working with so let's open the console and then from currency and then this amount and here we have some beautiful error as cost policy error and this is what i made mention that having your own backend to consume some external api is really important this api from exchange rate has some cost policy which simply means that we are using different server or front end to access the backend from exchange rate api and this is because the exchange rate server do not trust the our front end application so we have to avoid this and that is a cost error this is where we installed a package called cost so if you get back to the backend we have required the cost or we don't have it here so let's require the cost here and this is where we are going to tell our server that hey server trust our front end application i'm going to provide a comment as course configuration or course options and it goes like this const course options is equal to object and then specify the origin and the origin here is going to be array of trusted server or front end so here we will need our front end server or front end and in case you have already deployed your front end you have to provide it here and make sure to remove any forward slash and last step is that we're going to pass it as a middleware as app.use and then we're going to use the course and pass in the course options as that with this one let's try out refresh and then select and then provide this and let's wait and as you can see we got the result with a status of ok and then if you look in the data here we have the conversion rate from our backend awesome right so we are going to display that in our front end so after we got the response from here 
we are going to update our state. Remember, we have the result here and then the error. So here we are going to set the result by passing in the response dot data. I'm using optional chaining here to avoid using end operator. And here we know that we don't have any error, so error here is empty. And then in the catch, this is where we're going to have an error. We're going to set error and then provide error here and then comma. So in case we have error dot response, then we're going to grab or take the actual error as error dot response dot data. Else, we're going to use the error dot message. And that is it. So let's see the differences now. If I refresh and provide this currency, and we got the result. Here ends this project.